Hello everyone, my name is Jack Grady and uh, thank you for watching my video presentation. The paper I have chosen for this assignment is titled Seasonal Occurrence, Horizontal Movements, and Habitat Use Patterns of Whale Sharks in the Gulf of Mexico by Dr. Eric Hoffman's team from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, also known as NOAA. The motivation for writing this paper was to track the long-term movements of whale sharks in the Gulf of Mexico in order to understand their larger migratory patterns and habitat usage. Unlike many other large marine species, whale sharks appear to be nearly a globally genetic homogenous population. This is supported from previous migration studies, like in Madagascar and Mexico, that show whale sharks can travel well over 10,000 kilometers in a year, allowing them to interact with different populations of whale sharks. Prior to this study, our limited understanding of whale shark migratory patterns and habitat use in the Gulf of Mexico was based on IDing individuals from opportunistic sightings from fishermen, tourists, and offshore oil rig workers. We knew that at least some whale sharks aggregated in the northern Gulf of Mexico, but it was still unknown why they aggregated there, where they went when they left, and what habitat zones they actually used. To fill this gap of knowledge, this study used long-term GPS tracking devices that when attached, can record positional location data of the shark for nearly a year giving them a much more detailed picture of whale shark migration patterns and habitat usage than ever before. Now, two things before I go into the main result. Because this assignment is about the use of data visualizations in research, I will limit my discussion of results to only those discoveries that were enhanced by data visualizations. Two, I need to quickly define the habitat zones discussed in this paper. This map of the sea floor of the Gulf of Mexico is divided into four depths slash habitat zones. The reason why depth is used to define a habitat zone in oceans is because each depth creates its own distinct ecosystem, and thus are important to differentiate usage from one habitat to another. The continental shelf, here in light blue, is between 0 and 200 meters deep. This thin strip of darker blue is the continental shelf edge and is between 200 and 500 meters deep. The gray area is called the continental slope and it is defined as a region between 500 and 2500 meters deep. This dark blue region in the middle is open ocean and it is any depth below 2500 meters. Okay. Moving on to the main results, using the whale shark sighting data of over 20 years to create a weighted kernel density overlay on the ocean floor map used before, they were able to confirm a reliable aggregation point of whale sharks in the northern Gulf of Mexico in the summer, as this picture shows. Um, this is followed by massive dispersion away from the areas in the winter except for a few permanent residents. And you can see this clearly as I flip through. This is the summer, and this is the winter. Now that we've confirmed that they do indeed aggregate in a seasonal pattern, the next question is, where do they go? And this was answered by the GPS data with basically all over the Gulf of Mexico. This is a picture of all 42 GPS tagged sharks uh, that were tracked throughout the duration of the experiment. While this does look very messy, the researchers used a distribution map that compiled the latitude of each tag shark over each month of the following year. They showed a clear cyclical movement southwards during the winter months and then northward again during the summer months. Looking further into the GPS data, researchers further found that the majority of whale sharks split off into two major groups. One group went to the southwest area of the Gulf of Mexico, while the other group migrated to the southeast region of the Gulf of Mexico. Interestingly, none of these sharks ever left the Gulf of Mexico. In regards to habitat usage, the researchers used this monthly kernel density plot that were divided by sea floor depth slash habitat types, the continental shelf, the continental shelf edge, the continental slope, and open ocean. It showed that there were three distinct groups using different habitat zones that were divided along both sex and maturity. 
immature males, here in yellow, were found to spend most of their time on the continental shelf and then shift towards the continental slope during the fall and winter, only to slowly go back up again in early spring. It seems as they mature, adult males, here in blue, shift more towards deeper water on the continental slope and open ocean, but will still enter the shelf edge and continental shelf habitat not infrequently. Conversely, mature females, seen in red, were found almost exclusively on the continental slope and open ocean, and almost never ventured into shallower water. Unfortunately, there was no data on immature females. Now, before I talk about the final, and in my opinion, most interesting result from this paper, we must first talk about the loop current and anticyclonic eddies. The loop current is the major ocean current in the Gulf of Mexico, and it is a current of warm water that flows out from the Caribbean Sea between the Yucatan Peninsula and Cuba, flows up near Florida, and then down again through the Florida Straits. As the current moves throughout the year, bits of it break off and form with circular columns of warm water called anticyclonic eddies, or ACES, that follow the continental shelf edge around the Gulf. Using this knowledge of the current and the eddies, the researchers created a heat map. Using the fact that hot water expands, the researchers were able to create a heat map of the Gulf of Mexico showing both the current loop and ACESs. Using the differences in height of the surface water. Yes, this hot water is a meter taller than this cold water shown here. These visualizations indicate that whale sharks not only migrate south during the winter for warmer waters in general, but they actually seek out ACESs, as you can see here and here, during that migration route. And during the summer, they then return to the northern edge of the loop. The researchers hypothesized that the sharks are seeking out these warm columns of water because at the borders is highly productive areas for plankton, which they primarily feed on. While mapping migration patterns for animals and plotting them on a map for visualization is nothing new in the world of animal behavior. This paper's application of multiple visualization techniques with the latest tracking technology was used to great effect. Without these visualizations, both the readers and the researchers themselves would not have been able to understand their findings nearly as effectively. For instance, before this study, based on the sightings data, it was thought that whale sharks primarily lived on the shelf and the shelf edge, until the satellite data showed that the majority of these sharks were actually living over the continental slope and open ocean. Additionally, this paper's effective use of visualizations may encourage other marine biologists tracking migratory species to use similar techniques when identifying habitat selection and migratory patterns of their target species. Finally, knowing where whale sharks travel to and the habitats they select is critical for conservation, as you can't protect a species and their habitat from overexploitation if you don't know where they are. This is especially true when identifying areas where juveniles congregate, as increased juvenile mortality is especially dangerous for species that have slow maturation rates, as is the case with whale sharks that take over 10 to 15 years to mature. While conserving habitat on land is relatively straightforward, conserving areas of ocean is a concept that is still really in its infancy. By using a charismatic species like the whale shark, conservationists might be able to increase protection for their areas of summer aggregation, overwintering habitat, and major migration routes. I hope this presentation was both informative and especially interesting. Thank you very much.